So, let's give an overview of the printer. The HP LaserJet 4 was introduced in October of 1992 for a price of $2,200. The 4M was released at the same time for a price of $3,000. It is a medium duty business class printer, if you could not tell by the sheer size of this printer. And, uh, the 4 was one of a series of printers, the LaserJet 4 series. This was the mainstream model. There was also the larger heavy duty LaserJet 4 SI. There was also the light duty work group or small business class LaserJet 4P. I have one right there and I have a video of it if you want to see a demonstration of that printer. And then there was the home market LaserJet 4L. And I would recommend V Westlife's video if you want to see a 4L in action. There were also Macintosh versions of the other members, the LaserJet 4SIMX, the 4MP, and the 4ML. In 1994, the 4 and the 4M were replaced with the 4 Plus and the 4M Plus, which introduced a new print engine which could print faster and at slightly higher quality, and a slight update to the user interface. Other than that, the Plus models were pretty much the same. And then in April of 1996, the 4 Plus and 4M Plus were replaced with the HP LaserJet 5 and LaserJet 5M. And the 5 and 5M were internally the same as the 4 Plus and 4M Plus, but it had a new updated enclosure and a completely redesigned user interface. And uh, the LaserJet 5 is a very nice printer indeed. I actually hope to get one someday. Now, the LaserJet 4 series as a whole, as well as the LaserJet 5 series, but especially the LaserJet 4, are very revered printers, extremely revered printers. As a matter of fact, I consider the LaserJet 4 and 5 series, with the exception of the 5L, to be some of the best computer printers ever made. These were so incredibly reliable, probably way more reliable than HP meant for them to be. These printers are so incredibly durable. Just as an example, you'll often read stories of these reaching half a million pages, and I've read a couple of accounts of a LaserJet 4 reaching a million pages before requiring service. That's absolutely amazing. HP actually designed these to undergo service I think every 100,000 pages yet they are lasting many times longer than that as a matter of fact you know these printers were introduced 23 years ago but it's only been in the past few years that a lot of these in businesses are finally beginning to be retired uh, this printer amazingly has only 15,000 pages on it that's nothing for one of these very nice so this thing should hopefully have a lot of life left in it. But yeah, these these were so incredibly reliable. They were extremely popular. You know, these had to have been one of the most popular, if not the most popular printer in businesses for and schools for a long time. And these just last so long, you know, we had one of these in 8th grade, middle school. 8th grade, that was in 2007, 2008. So that printer would have already been 16 years old. And I've read quite a few accounts where as of 2015, there are many of these still in professional service in businesses and schools. And it's just so remarkable. A very striking example of good craftsmanship, good electronic and mechanical craftsmanship. HP just, they outdid themselves with the LaserJet 4. And the LaserJet 5 is just as good, as, as well as even the LaserJet 5 successor, the LaserJet 4000. All these LaserJet printers from the early 90s through to the early 2000s, they were just absolutely amazing printers. And uh, here's another mark of how much in use the LaserJet 4 series still is. Now, I'm not 100% sure of this, so don't take this as gospel. But as far as my research concludes, HP still makes the 98A cartridge 
that is used in the LaserJet 4 and 5. That's really remarkable because the cartridge used in the HP LaserJet 3, which was I believe the 95A, was discontinued in 2006, nine years ago. And the LaserJet 3 was made up until 1992. A printer discontinued in 92, whose cartridges were discontinued nine years ago, but a printer discontinued just three or four years later still has its cartridges manufactured nine years later, I think. I did a lot of Googling. I cannot find anything that suggests that HP discontinued the 98A cartridge. HP has discontinued two other cartridges that were compatible with the 98A. In 2009, they discontinued the 98X, which is a high yield version of the 98A. And all the way back in 2002, they discontinued a cartridge called the 98E, which was a low yield version of the 98A meant for home use. But I cannot find anything that suggests they have discontinued the 98A cartridge. And I do know that they at least made the 98A cartridge as late as when they were making their latest toner cartridge box design, which was introduced in 2010 or 2011. And as far as my research goes, I've done the same research for the 74A cartridge, which is used in the 4P and 4L. As far as that research concludes, HP may still be making the 74A cartridge. And it just goes to show how popular these are that you can still get cartridges for them. How remarkable is that? Unfortunately, uh, replacement parts is a slightly more complicated story. Um, as of making this video, when you go on the HP Part Surfer website and you put in this printer, what you learn first of all is of course HP ended all support for this printer in 2001, but uh, they do have a list of replacement parts that they made and a few of the parts do explicitly say that they are no longer available, but most of the parts for the LaserJet 4, according to the Part Surfer website, are still available. Whether or not they're still actually being made, um, I don't know. My guess would be no, but uh, they are at least still in inventory. And there are quite a few websites who stock replacement parts for these. Uh, two popular ones that come to my mind are BrokenPrinter.com and PrinterWorks.com. And uh, Broken Printer not only stocks parts, but they actually have videos on YouTube of how to install those replacement parts and they do it in real time on a real LaserJet 4 which is uh, pretty awesome. So yeah, um, as of 2015 it's pretty easy to keep one of these running if you need any replacement parts but of course down the road that's not always going to be the case however many years from now replacement parts are eventually just gonna run out. So if you are actively looking for a really durable laser printer, I would not recommend that you get one of these. If you find one for free or for really cheap and it either works perfect or doesn't require much time or money to get running, absolutely get one of these. They're a great printer. But if you're actively looking for one, as in looking to buy one on eBay or whatever, I would not recommend the LaserJet 4. What I would recommend instead would be at least the LaserJet 4 Plus or the LaserJet 5. I lump those two together because uh, they are almost identical internally. They share many of the same replacement parts. And it's the same case uh, for those two machines. Um, I don't know when HP quit supporting the 4 Plus, but I know they quit supporting the 5 in 2005. And it's pretty much the same thing on the Part Server website for the LaserJet 5. Um, there are a few parts which they explicitly say are no longer available, but most of the parts they list, they don't have a thing where you can go and buy them on the website, but they, they just list them, they just list what the parts are, but they, do, but they don't say no longer available. And of course you go on one of the aforementioned uh, third party websites and they have plenty of replacement parts for the 4 Plus and the 5. I think the 4 Plus and 5 have even more replacement parts available than the 4 does just because you know, the 4 Plus and the 5 were collectively on the market longer than the 4 was. And of course they're newer machines, so it would make sense that they have more replacement parts available. But uh, I wouldn't even go out to say you should look for a LaserJet 4 Plus or 5 if you're actively looking to buy one. What I would recommend would be either a LaserJet 4000 
4050 or 4100. They were the last laser jets based on this core design with this basic internal and external layout. And uh, from what I've read, those printers, the 4100 in particular, because it was the last one, they were the last really, really good laser jet printers. Just as an example, the 4100's successor, the 4200, I haven't read anything bad in particular about that printer, but I did read a couple of accounts that said that the 4200 had pretty flimsy build quality compared to the 4100. Also, the 4200 introduced a radical new design, which I personally don't like very much. So, yeah, in my opinion, or in my educated conclusion, the 4100 was the very last laser jet printer that was really, really solidly built. And the 4000, 4050, and 4100 are all similar. They just had minor upgrades between them. But, uh, yeah, if you're actively looking for a heavy-duty laser jet printer, I would recommend either the 4000, 4050, or the 4100. The 4000 was introduced in 1997, and the 4100 was discontinued in 2003, so that's six years of production. And the 4100 only ended support in 2010, I believe, 2009 or 2010. So replacement parts are, of course, very plentiful. As a matter of fact, HP might still be making all the replacement parts for them. So yeah, I'd recommend one of those printers if you're actively looking for one. But if you come across one of these for free or cheap, and it doesn't need a ton of replacement parts to get working, absolutely go for one of these. That was certainly the case with mine here. All it needed was a $15 toner cartridge and uh, a little bit of a disassembly. And it's a perfect working printer. I will absolutely put this into regular use. And everything I said applies to the 4P and the 4L as well. I wouldn't go out and pay $100 for one on eBay, but uh, if you find one for really cheap, absolutely get it. And uh, I dare say it'd be worth buying replacement parts if you have to, to uh, get it working. I bought that one for $10 at a thrift store, and it works perfect. All it needs is a new toner cartridge. I still got to get one for it. And here's what the 4 and 4P look like size-wise. And uh, yeah, the 4P is a great machine. Um, if you want to actively seek out for a LaserJet 4 series printer, I can't say whether or not I'd recommend you get the 4P or the, the regular 4. Uh, if you want to smaller and nicer looking printer absolutely get the 4P over the 4. Um, the 4 is definitely easier to get replacement parts for and the 4 is easier to service. I've never tried disassembling the 4P but I've read that it is quite a bit more difficult than the 4. But uh, they're both very nice printers. They print just as good quality. Uh, don't bother actively seeking out a 4L unless there's some subjective reason that you'd like a 4L. Just get the 4P. It's no bigger, but it's a lot more functional. And the 4L only prints at uh, 300 dots per inch, while the 4P and the rest of the 4 series, they print at 600 dots per inch. Which brings me to another topic. That's pretty much the biggest advantage that the 4 series improved over the 3 series, is that the 3 series were 300 DPI printers, while the 4 series as well as the 5 series are 600 DPI printers. Now for text, that's not a huge difference. Maybe a slight minor improvement, but you probably wouldn't see it with most text printing. But 600 DPI is a huge difference over 300 DPI when it comes to graphics. Graphics look like crap at 300 DPI, whereas at 600 DPI, they, are, they look pretty good. You know, it's it's not photo quality, not at all, but, uh, you know, for graphs and, you know, charts and stuff, 600 DPI is pretty passable and a huge improvement over 300 DPI. Well, that does it for this part in our series on the HP LaserJet 4M printer from 1992. I know in the last part I said that we were going to get to an overview of the printer in this part. Well, I guess I rambled on too much. Surprise, surprise, that's how we do things here on the Maritime Man. But join me in the next part when we do get to an overview of the printer and uh, check out all of its basic features. I really hope you'll join me there, and I hope you guys enjoyed this part, and I will see you in the next one. I have the toner cartridge out, 
and they started printing a test page with the toner cartridge out, which it's not supposed to do, not at all. The cover was open and the cartridge was out, and it was starting to feed this paper.